Newborns are born with a sex, but no gender. Sometimes adults give them outward signs so that others can know what sex the baby is. But the infant itself has no interior identity as a boy or a girl. By age three, though, there are boys who like to play with trucks and balls, and girls who like to play with dolls and paper cutouts. There are also boys who like to cook and wear dresses, and girls who like climbing trees and playing rugby. But how do gender and identity develop? Gender is not a thing you can hold in your hands; it is a location on an ever-changing landscape. When they emerge from the womb, infants differ slightly from one another and encounter similar landscapes. As the infants grow, the landscape develops peaks and valleys of various heights and depths, as it is shaped by how caregivers engage with the child through touch, sound, sight, and emotion. The contours of gender emerge from an infant's physiology and temperament. The gendered activities and bodies of adults, interactions via tone of voice, offered toys, choices of infant clothing, and even the wallpaper in the nursery. At first, an infant's nervous system records its gender landscape without words or symbols. As the toddler develops language, he or she acquires a symbolic vision of gender: pink dresses and dolls become symbols of girlness. Blue pants and cars of boyness. By age three, children have an internal sense of gender and a set of symbols that may range from hypermasculine to hyperfeminine. On the landscape, some valleys are very deep, and the child may remain in a valley first occupied at age three. But others are shallow, and continued changes in life's contours may lead to new valleys and thus to changes in a person's location on the gendered landscape of life.